I, 24, have two half-siblings Millie, 32, and Tom, 35. My parents had an affair, my mom met him on a business trip, and he didn't tell her he was actually married with kids until she found out she was pregnant with me. I only really spoke to him twice a year through a 5 min phone call. My mom raised me totally by herself, but when I was 15 I lost her. My dad's wife knew about the affair and basically stuck with him anyway, because my dad was very very rich, as in had four houses in posh parts of London and Surrey rich, and I was out of sight for the first 15 years of my life. When my mum died, I went to live with them, and she made my life hell. She'd make horrible remarks about my appearance, called my bouts of depression because of my loss attention seeking, she made sure I was never really alone with my dad, and I was shipped off to boarding school. I was never invited back for Christmas, and I spent most of the summer holidays in the village my boarding school was closest to. It was incredibly lonely, and my dad didn't ever seem to care much about me either. When I got to unit, both of them refused to help me out financially, even though they did the same for my siblings. I got through university by working during the academic year and throughout the holidays. Nobody apart from Tom bothered to show up at my graduation, and he's the only sibling I'm close to. Anyway, about two months ago my dad very suddenly died of a heart attack. Not only was I not invited to the funeral, but Tom told me after while my stepmother was doing her speech, she only mentioned my dad having two kids, Millie and Tom. Tom was fuming at her, but she waved it off as saying if she'd have mentioned me, she'd have ruined my dad's reputation. A week later, my dad's lawyers told me my dad had secretly left me shares, some money he'd saved and a life insurance payout he set up when I was bored. He left a letter apologizing for being so emotionally distant that he wished he'd appreciated me more and that he knew the money was never going to replace how lonely I'd felt, but he was hoping it would guarantee me some kind of stability. I've taken the money and I'm planning on immigrating soon just so I can be on my own and get on with my life. And here's where I made the idiot. My stepmother never bothered telling me my dad died or anything but earlier this week she texted me asking if I wanted to have lunch with her because she wanted to talk to me about my dad's will. I texted back saying, you never made an effort to make me part of the family and let's be honest you never will. I never want anything to do with you again and please don't come running to me about your problems because you're nothing to me. Tom told me she was sobbing at how it was unfair I didn't want to give her a chance and Millie sent me a text saying I was an idiot because I was taking advantage of how fragile my stepmother was. Tom siding with me quietly, but I'm wondering if I've been too harsh to her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your stepmom, if you can call her that, because she was not a parent to you in any sense of the word, made it abundantly clear you were an intruder in her family and not part of the family at all. I'm sorry your dad didn't stand up for you and be the father you deserved. The money he left you, while generous, doesn't at all excuse or make up for the years of emotional neglect. She clearly harbored resentment towards your father over his infidelity and took it out on you. You did not deserve that. That's her problem. I'm guessing she's not happy that your dad left you money in his will and wanted to try to find a way to stake a claim. I don't know what her endgame is, but nothing you said was malicious or untrue you owe this woman nothing. The fact she contacted you about the will sounds dodgy to me. I think your father was distant to an extent to please your stepmother and I can almost guarantee she heavily influenced his decision in not supporting you whilst you were at university. She deserved to hear how wicked she was to you growing up, especially when you lost your mother so young and she still had no compassion for you. She even failed to acknowledge you when your father passed away she can go and do one. It sounds like your stepmother resented your very presence, demonstrated her wishes to erase you from the family's existence, and I wouldn't be surprised if her intent in contacting you is to try to bully you into giving her what money your father left for you. Block her, move on, and never look back. It sounds like Tom is the only good person in the family, so by all means, continue to foster a relationship with him. My husband and I have been married for 10 years, we are not in the United States. A few weeks ago I saw a competition that we would both qualify for and told him about it. He said he wasn't interested in it, so I said I would do submissions for both of us anyway to increase my chances of winning. Lo and behold, he won and got $5,000. Initially he said that he would put the money towards some home repairs, but then he changed his mind and decided to keep the money. 
I asked him how much he was giving to me, and he said none because he has bills to pay. I was annoyed but left it alone. Fast forward to last week and I won the $50,000 grand prize. When I told him he was ecstatic and started talking about what he would do with his portion of the money. I stopped him and told him I have plans for the money and he's not getting any of it. I'm putting $10,000 to get the repairs done, some will go to savings and the rest will pay off my loan. He got upset and when I reminded him that he didn't share his prize with me he said I'm being unfair because I got a lot more than he did. Honestly I would have shared mine 50-50 with him, but his behavior when he won just rubbed me the wrong way. So am I wrong for not giving him any of my prize money? I think I may be the idiot because I did get a significantly larger amount of money and me not sharing it is kind of punishment for him not sharing his before. Not the idiot. Let me get this straight, you found out about a competition that he wasn't interested in, but you went ahead and did the work for both of you, entered both of you, and he won due to your efforts, but he still didn't think he should share his prize with you. Just because you happened to win too, but a much larger amount, doesn't change the fact that he wants something from you that he was not willing to do for you in return when the situation was reversed. I'm not old enough to be married or anything, but I'll try and assess the situation. You paid for a ticket for him, he literally put zero commitment into getting the first 5k, and he didn't give you any. Then, you won your 50k, and he asks for some, even though he did again nothing to earn it. You're definitely not the idiot, you've done nothing wrong, and he even got 5k out of it. He's really lucky to have such a generous spouse and needs to stop being such an entitled clown. What's his is his, but what's yours is both of yours. Nope. He set the standard and now he's pissed you're holding him to it. I don't understand not sharing money, so I think you're both selfish idiots. If I have something I want my husband to have it too. But he was a selfish person, and now he's reaping the rewards of his selfishness. Most of this happened years ago, when my son who is now 30 was in high school. He had a girlfriend Beth he was devoted to, they were together for 3 years she became almost like a daughter to me. She was a sweet girl, but she had some problems, and there were times when she would treat my son badly, accusing him of cheating on her or intending to leave her. As far as I could tell these accusations had no basis in reality, and my son was always blindsided, spending hours or days trying to convince her it wasn't true. Often he would be in tears not knowing what to do, it was awful. Sometimes he asked me for advice, and I would try to help him see that the situation was not sustainable, but in the end he always managed to talk her round, and they would be okay for some months until the next time. Every time he was convinced it would be the last time, but as far as I could see she only got worse. I knew speaking against her wouldn't work, but I hoped once he went away to college he might gain some perspective, so when they started talking about getting married straight after graduation, I was very concerned. I decided to offer him a deal that if he would hold off marrying her until after college, I would fund him completely so he would not have to go into debt, which I pointed out would give them a better start together. He accepted, and within six months of him leaving she was pregnant by someone else, and he was done. I was relieved, but sad to see how things went for her. She had two kids in two years with two different men, neither of whom stuck around. I was in touch with her a bit and gave her money a could of times. For a while she was mostly stable, but after having her third child and getting left again she had a breakdown and was looking at having her kids taken away. It broke my heart because she really is a sweet soul and such a devoted mother. Seeing as she had no one else I offered to let her live with me till she got back on her feet, and yes I did ask my son, he moved across the country for work and is now happily settled a wonderful partner, he says he considers Beth family is happy for me to help as I see fit. Although things have been difficult all around what with the virus, the kids are a joy and Beth and I are, were, good friends, she has a new job and is taking evening classes. All was well until my sister visited and had a silly tiff with Beth, culminating in her telling Beth I was the reason my son didn't marry her at the end of high school. She had a complete meltdown, calling me manipulative, treacherous, evil, jealous, saying I stole the love of her life, even implying I had inappropriate feelings for my son. She now hasn't spoken one word to me in a week, I am at my wit's end. You made a good offer, and in doing so, prevented what would have been a toxic situation. You're not the idiot for breaking them up because you didn't. Her cheating did. You simply made an offer, a good one, for them to wait on marriage. Not stop the marriage. 
You took a gamble and won. However, you are the idiot for inviting her to move in. You knew, from watching her relationship with your son, that she is not stable. You knew, from watching her life become a mess, that she was not stable. You invited toxicity into your home and wonder why things got toxic. Really. You can point out that you never forbade your son from marrying her, you just asked him to go to college first. They broke up because of her actions, not yours. That said, if she was accusatory and vindictive with your son, it shouldn't surprise you when she ultimately turns accusatory and vindictive towards you. That's a part of her personality. She's not going to see you as the kind-hearted mother figure who gave her money, a place to stay, love and support, she'll wind up seeing you as just another person who betrays her, because that seems to be her pattern with the entire world. Not the idiot. The goodwill you've shown this woman has been above and beyond. You have nothing to apologize for. Incentivizing your son to make good life choices was the right thing to do. If she had any sense of self-reflection, she'd be horrified at how she treated your son quite frankly. Be patient, she clearly needs support. But hold firm. About a week ago, I stepped out of my room to see someone I didn't know on our couch, my roommate introduced us and let me know that he would be staying for the night, cool I guess. I wasn't asked even as a courtesy if this was okay, which I always do on my end. His belongings were strewn about the place, and I even joked about oh, he's moved in, which was met with nervous laughter. Anyway, as the days have gone by he has become increasingly messy and disorganized, even having his girlfriend over without asking us, numerous times. I do not know their vaccination and COVID situation, and it's beginning to stress me out. I tried to get a timeline on move out, but I have yet to receive a straight answer. This has finally boiled over and met its pinnacle of insanity last night, I came home to something of mine being borrowed by the guest. I put my foot down and was firm that it needed to be returned. I don't see an end in sight and I'm trying to come up with ways to put a stop to this cleanly, however, I don't know there is one. The worst of it is that both my roommate and a guest are acting like I'm out of sorts for even asking about a timeline. Feeling crazy now, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Tell guest to go. Literally. Guest, it's time for you to leave right now. Your mess is too much, roommate said you would be here for one night, it's been a week, and you've overstepped numerous times in that week. Leave now. If you own the home, tell roommate they are free to leave too if they don't like it. If it's a lease and you are both on it, that's more tricky. But, as you no longer agree to this house guest, he needs to go now. You need to act now, because in many places, letting him stay a certain amount of time makes him a de facto tenant. Just be calm, and matter of fact. Don't re-argue the person being there in the first place, the issue is when, not if, they are going to leave. There has to be a straight answer, so ask direct questions, and don't get sidetracked with emotional nonsense. This person is not on your lease, you were okay with a week of emergency couch surfing, but you can't agree to an extra roommate. Don't ask for rent. They'll take it as an invitation to stay, and he probably still won't pay, but now you'll have to evict. Just pack all his stuff up and put it by the door. Let them know that, just like they didn't ask your permission for a week-long houseguest, you're not asking permission to end his stay. He can stay with his girlfriend, in a hotel, his car, wherever, as long as it's not your place. After a few months with GI issues I finally started seeing a nutritionist in order to get a diet that would help me with it and also lose weight as I've been struggling with it for almost all my life. So far I've lost about 30 pounds and people are noticing. A friend who is also struggling with weight asked me what I did and I told her it was mostly diet with a nutritionist and slowly getting back into a workout routine. Now this is when the situation where I might be the idiot happens. She asked me to see the meal plan sheet I carry with me. I said no and instead just offered that it was reduced portions and eating often and balanced, so I'm not really hungry or restricting myself too much and offered to give her the number of the doctor. She said she just wanted to get a peek and see if this is a diet she might want to follow before making an appointment with my nutritionist. I put my foot down and now she's mad at me. Now this friend, as far as I know, doesn't have a history with ED, but I've seen her go on crazy diets in the past without supervision. My diet is pretty tailored to me being a vegetarian, she isn't, and having GERD and IBS, she doesn't, and I feel she might just copy it without getting an appointment which I don't think is healthy. 
I thought this was the right thing to do, but everyone is calling me selfish and an idiot for not helping her lose weight when it wouldn't hurt me to just show her the meal plan. So, am I that idiot? The diet plan was made specifically for you. You paid and pay money for the plan and for all appointments. No idiots here, I get that someone can be curious about the diet plan, but she should not push if you don't want to give out those information. Also as you stated, the plan is tailored to your needs, and if she wants to know if she could follow such plan herself, she should get an appointment and have one tailored to her own needs. It is not OP's obligation to help someone else to lose weight just because they have a dietary restriction that works for them. Is there secret food listed that you don't want her to know about or something? This is petty. What would it hurt to take a second and just show her? What she does with it is up to her. Based on what you've told her about your meal plan, I don't think she needs to actually see your menu. If she's pushing you, then she'd be the idiot. I really want to call you the idiot here, but you have a right to choose who to share with and who not to. So, begrudgingly, I'm gonna say no idiots here. Diets are bad. Life changes are good. If she wants a meal plan that will work and last, she definitely needs to take you up on the doctor's number. What works for you may not work for her. Your general advice is actually really solid. I've lost 46 pounds doing just that. Anything more personalized, and I'd got to a nutritionist. You're the idiot. If you owned up and said you didn't want to share it because you paid for it and feel she needs to pay for her own, I could at least respect the honesty. But instead you're trying to rationalize, being secretive over a list of foods and recipes and pretending it's out of concern for her. The idea that there's something so original and special about your meal plan that it would cause adverse harm if she follows it is a reach. You're not some elite athlete or bodybuilder who is on a very specific diet with very specific or intense performance or physique goals, cut the dramatics.